Hello, good afternoon. Uh, this is Ken McBee joining you from sunny Phoenix, Arizona. So we're still to the point where we can kind of laugh about the weather because it's in the 80s, <laughs> yeah, right? Nice. Here in another month or so, you guys will all be making fun of us because it's going to be boiling. So I've uh, got some of our shop folks with us today. Want to introduce yourselves? Steve Lynch, uh, Senior Vice President of Shop Operations and Equipment Purchasing. Awesome. And I'm uh, Tim Burks. I'm the uh, Vice President of Body Shop and Shop Operations. Excellent. Well, we're going to start doing more of these series. Uh, we heard from feedback from our drivers that, hey, first of all, they really thought that these were informative. They thought we should do them more often. We just did an engagement survey, which thank you. We had 3,500 responses, which we got all kinds of things we can work on for the next six months, right? Where for they, sure, for sure. Hey, one thing's for sure. You're telling us what you want. And we're listening. So we want to make sure we address those things. Uh, we're going to hit uh, a few of the items really in a list that we've put together of what you've asked and then or things that you gave us on surveys or on the portals, things like that. Uh, we're going to get you some answers and then we're going to take some live questions. So drop those questions in the chat and they'll funnel them through to us and we'll see those at the end and we'll answer those. Probably go about 30 minutes, but we want to make sure we try to get to everything that you have. All right. So let's just really talk about uh, our agenda first is, hey, there's one thing that we've really uh, leaned into because of the communication they've asked for. And that's flow codes, right? That's correct. So, yeah. Steve, you brought them with us, right? I did. So, they're in the truck. So, if you go down to more and on the tablet, you hit more. There's they're also in the uh, index there, so you can get flow codes there. They're hanging in the shops, Thanks. in the offices. These are visor cards. Uh, we have interactive ones uh, that are like PDF pages that the terminals have. So, there's no reason why you can't get these. You should be able to get them at every terminal or shop, right? Correct. That's for sure. All right, so that, I think this is really cool technology. Um, one of the things I wanna to touch on is there's a permits one. 98% of our permits are okay to be uh, you know, looked at digitally. The very first thing you see in the list if you scan a permits is your ELD card. That's something that we'll get tickets for if we don't have it in there, right? And it's really, if we loaded it in the, in the flow code, then you have all your insurances, authorities, and then all your state permits. There's lots of good things coming. We're working on by June to put in all the tractor trailer registrations either there or on the tablet. So that project's going on right now. So hopefully you, you won't have any problem getting insurance, uh, registrations, permits, anything. But what you guys are here for today is a really cool one. It's the shop. The shop one's changed. Um, so if you scan the shop one, tell us about that. Tim. So if you click on the shop one. So number one, it gives you the on-road contact information. Secondly, it gives you the shop contact information and their hours of operation. And then there's a one in there that says equipment videos. And that one is packed full of informational videos that will help you to better understand how to use the equipment. So it covers things, for example, how to use your idle systems, how to use your bunk heaters, how to set those up. It also covers pre-trip inspections. Um, it goes through, there's tire information in there on how to properly inspect tires. Uh, and it just goes on and on. There's tons of information in there and we'll be constantly adding more as we go. So if you're looking through there and there's something out there that uh, you don't see that you think is beneficial and you want, let us know so that we can get that outed uh, for you. But they're just packed full of information. And you could tell your terminal leader or shop leader kind of what you're looking Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Because right. our, our project team that we're on together, we meet right. once a week. We're building this out. We're building all the incentives and stuff out that uh, that are in these, these right. flow codes. So just keep that feedback coming. So, so if there's things that, like I said, you need, just let's get them out of it. Tim, when's the timeline for the videos to go live? Uh, I believe they're going to be up there in, on live uh, next week for sure. Yes. Right. So by Monday, we're going to start with the first 10. I bet you when we're done, there's going to be 100 or 200, right? We'll probably, probably have to put them in yeah. categories. Uh, so, you know, I think the coolest thing is, is when you click on where to find uh, or you're on the shop and you go down there, there's radio buttons. You can call right to the shop, right? There's no dialing a phone number. Right. You click on the hours of operation. It highlights the day, what their mm -hmm. hours are. So there should be that's good information. That was part of the communication, I think, that everybody was looking for. One of the other topics that came up is, hey, I've got my truck in the shop. How do I know when it's going to be done, right? So number one, we have the Engage app. So if you don't have the Engage app or you haven't signed up for it, please do that right away. 
The reason for that is, is we have messaging that's built in that will give you updates on your truck as it's going through the repair process. So for example, if it comes in for, let's say a B service, and we find out that it's got a recall or a campaign and we got to get a part, it'll update you on the status of that truck. More importantly, when it's done, it'll send you the communication to your phone via the Engage app. It'll send you a text letting you know that the repairs have been completed. But in order for you to get those messages, you have to have the Engage app. So for, for you to get that, please download the Engage app. It takes, what, 30 seconds oh, to set that yeah, up? It's super fast. Um, but that is one sure way for us to be able to keep you updated through that repair process without necessarily having to call you. It'll just update you throughout the phone. And there's the lots of thing, other categories on there, driver correct. performance, there's, other things you need. Yeah, so. Correct. The other thing that we're working on getting uh, implemented out is monitors throughout the shops and in the driver's lounges. So that if you're at a facility and you're hanging out in the driver's lounge wanting to know the status of your truck, the Engage app obviously would work for that. But we're also getting monitors set up so that you can see the status of your truck through that process. And when it's done, your truck will show up on the completed list. And so when you see it's on the completed list, you know it's done, you can go pick it up. And, and that's done through the live DNR that we currently right. have today. So it's a terrace that, that does Correct. actually operate through live information that's coming through at the shop at that time. So you, right. you can see your truck in, in process and other trucks are in process. And, and you're going to have a monitor in the shop and in the... Uh, the driver's lounge is moving forward and we're uh, today we got about 10 shops that are that way uh, so we have a long ways to go to get those all built in get them done um, it's all about equipment availability at this time and well connectivity and, well connectivity. computer shortages is yeah. the big yeah, issue right now so true. as the computers come in and, and we get them we'll get them implemented yep, so. and installed um, so and then on that list on. when it's the the dnr if i'm like number three on the list does that mean i should be three to get out or is that just hey there's the list there's, we, contact the shop we owner. sort it usually by uh by, by the promise date and time okay um, is normally how it's how it's sorted good deal mm -hmm. all right and the closer it gets to the promise date and time it turns colors it does so you know where we're at and that also lets the mechanics know hey you're getting close to the promise date and time do we need right. to make a change or are we still meeting that time and, and it'll show to you on there the, the original promise date and time and then it'll have one next to it for the updated because sometimes things change. Things change. Uh, and, and so that's how we track it. And that's because we have to get parts or things Correct. don't come through Correct. right away. And all fails, you can do the old-fashioned thing and we go back and we talk to the shop foreman or the shop leader, right? Shop leader. Right. right. Yeah. And once again, you've got the, the contact numbers. You can call the shops as well for those updates. Perfect. All right. So there is a quick lane or a pre-call lane. Some have been labeled a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I'm told at every shop. Is that correct? So, so I'm going to say probably 95% of the time there's one at every shop there. You know, we have a lot of business at our Walmart locations and they, they only have a bay or two bays that may not have a full on what you call a pre-qualification bay, but they do do the pre-qualifications outside the bays if needed. But yes, everybody should have the that. Terminal locations. The terminal locations do have them. And the, and the reason we have the pre-qualification bay is, is driven by having a communication with the driver so the driver does not fill out a piece of paper and leave. We have that communication with the driver so we fully understand what is wrong with the equipment. And if we have any questions for them, especially, you know, if we're coming into AC season, the ACs do a lot of different things at different times. And we need that information in order to uh, really fulfill out the troubleshooting tree on, on this equipment. And it just makes life easier for all of us where we can give, you know, we can tell the guy or gal in there that, Hey, we're get, we're going to be ten hours before we get to your truck, or three hours, or whatever that time frame is before they leave the truck with us, and and we take the truck from them, and we complete the repairs, and then we get it back to them. But so that's another, why the pre qual and and the pre qual quick lane. The other part of the pre qual is a quick lane. We want to do anything that takes up to thirty minutes. We want to repair right there, right in that. Lane. And we fix about what Tim fifty percent of the trucks a day that come through the prequal lane are repaired and they can just, the drivers can go on their way. Right. So if I need a headlight or a glad Head, hand real quick or something like that, that's, you're going to go through the, go through the quick lane, lane, and, get it lane done. Yep, and it's right. going to get taken care of. So, so, and it's kind of the evaluation part, like you would from a, even a car dealership where you got to go through there. That's where they tell you everything, right? That is right. correct. Hey, even if it's a long-term fix or you're going home, 
you know what to expect. Well, the other thing that we do in that lane as well, so you may be coming in just for, you know, a glad hand or something, but there could be a recall on that truck as well. And we'll look at that if the driver has the time and everything, and it's not a safety sensitive recall or campaign, we're going to take care of that during that same time frame as well. Perfect. Because most of our recalls and our campaigns or bulletins that we have can be done with, within under an hour. So we'll, we'll take care of two things at once throughout that process. Excellent. The, the one thing I do want to point out with that I think is important that's not on this list that I'll, I'll just add in there is when we bring the trucks in for service. Okay. When it's time for that PM service, that's ideally when we want to make sure when that service is done, that there's everything on that truck is 100% recalls, campaigns, bulletins. So, you know, our, our PM service takes about three hours to do today. Now, just because we do that PM in three hours doesn't mean the truck's going to be ready in three hours. We may find items on there that need repair. So once again, if we do the update app to the engage, you'll see that communication that says, oh, by the way, we found these items that we have to repair. And then your uh, updated ETA would change for when your truck's going to be ready. So just know that when we do the federal inspection, we're going through to make sure that that truck or trader is 100% ready to go. Every recall campaign, everything's been taken care of. So something that um, I think would help all the drivers, if if every driver took the time to, if it's something that's not a DOT item, like hey, my cigarette lighter don't work, or my passenger window doesn't roll down, or something like that, if it can wait, because right. you're only like a week away from doing your V service, you should hold wait. on to it, those yeah, and you, give them all. You want to wait point. for the things that aren't safety type related things, right? Mm -hmm. Get those done when you get your PM, if you can, right? Obviously, if you can't see your speedometer, that's a problem. We need to take care of that right away. But to the other things, you know, like my dome lights out or I've got a cabinet that's loose in the truck or something of that nature, those things, you wait until it's time for your PM and get those done there. And, and that's why we have the, the prequal lanes, to have that communication with the driver and let him know, hey, you can roll the truck the way it is. Go out, you know, and make money on the next load and then bring it back in at a more convenient time for you and for us at the same time because we can be loaded up pretty quickly on certain days um you know we get loaded up on monday mornings and and it goes all the way through friday uh, afternoon when we get you know get a little bit of reprieve, reprieve yeah. in the afternoon on fridays but other than that we get loaded up and you know and voice your choice and those types of things on this this here ken was a good thing to bring up today is you know we get quick lane what's a quick lane right because they come to the they come, drivers come to the facility, they go and get in the pre-qualification bay. And the first thing they may have to do, there's already four or five trucks in front of them and it takes them a little bit of time. But we instruct our pre lane leaders, what they need to do is grab folks that are working on trucks in the shop, come and take out the spike in the business for the little bit of time and then get back on the trucks after we take the so spike. The Lane you don't at want the grocery the store to gets long. Yeah. That's where you bring in a few more checkers. Right? Exactly. Kind of like the QT approach. Yeah. Right? Yep. Same thing uh, for this. That, hey, so we'll bring some more mechanics and, out. And right. the, you know, and we know that doesn't work 100% all the time, but that is our goal is to make sure we take the spike out as quick as we can. We don't want our drivers waiting for us. We need to be on the game plan. Right? Well, and we don't want our drivers necessarily working on our trucks because that's our mechanics. Uh, yet they're, they could carry some fluids or they could carry some minor things, right, that keeps them out of trouble. So I think one of them is a spare tire, right? Every spare truck should tire. have a spare tire. Spare tire, <laughs> spare and, tire extra, you know, uh, headlamp or mud flap, uh, tail light, glad hand garments. Those are all quick, easy things that, that, that anybody can These are things we can get in the shop if, Correct. Hey, if just because you're not missing a, a mud flap, you could get a mud flap so you could take with you. Absolutely. And then like there's some fluids too, right? We don't want a bunch of fluids like spilling in the truck, but is there some fluids like windshield wiper fluid, yeah, so stuff like washer that? washer fluid, you know, oil and, and antifreeze. Uh, most drivers carry an extra jug and obviously we'll fill those up. The only thing that we don't give out in jugs is death. Death. Yeah, we won't do that, that because it's too easy to contaminate the system. Okay. Right. And, so, and, and make sure when you at the, if you're at the terminals, go ahead and get that stuff topped off. And even oil is a little bit tough one to take because what happens is it'll leak out no matter what you do on an oil jug. Right. It leak in, leak underneath your bunk, and then you get everything just big oil mess. and all that. Just a mess. So, but coolant is not that bad. It stays in this uh, container pretty well. And right. coolant is something you may use. Oil you shouldn't use in between 
services. services. You, really I mean, if you're adding oil in between PMs, there's, a problem. There, there's an issue, right? But just know, also know they can get that with their com data card. They can get oil or antifreeze too. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another thing that, that comes up. So there's some top on-road items that I think is a frustration for our shop, but a frustration because it could delay other, other drivers with stuff like lockouts, right? I lost yeah. my keys, right. some crazy stuff. So what are some of those top on-road items that you're seeing that maybe we could prevent really easy? And then what are other top on-road, like carrying a spare tire, I think is one of them too, right? Yeah. So when you start looking at the on-road items, obviously the things of, you know, where if somebody's parking somewhere, it's rainy, don't park in the muddy or in a dirt field. Don't want to be That's, towed out. You're going to get stuck. You're going to get towed. Um, if it's, you know, if it's snowy conditions, just be very cautious of where you park the vehicle. Uh, number two is lockouts. Lockouts, locking the key out of the truck. Always have a spare. Keep a spare in your pocket, your wallet, your tennis shoe, your boot, something. So that if something happens, you do accidentally lock the truck, you've got a spare key to be able to get. And you can get those spares at the shop. At any 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 terminal location, okay. we can we can cut keys. And that's an expensive one, right? That that yeah, one there is, is. Like, like a four or five hundred dollars a lot well, of time. It, well, it really depends. But depends, you're, but... you're going to be somewhere between two fifty to to four hundred dollars to get just come out and unlock. Because you lost your keys, correct? But when you start looking at the you know the the items that you know the number one thing that we could use your help with is making sure we do a good pre-trip inspection, paying attention to your 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 tires your air systems, your lights, your reflectors, your mud flaps, your airlines, your air hoses, uh, and, and making sure that, you know, the brakes are good. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the biggest things that, uh, that you can do as a, as a driver that really help yourself. And what I mean by that is if you're, for example, on your tractor and you're at a facility, if you're doing that pre-trip, you see it, you take it to the shop, it's much cheaper for our shop to do the repair than it is to have it done over the road. But if you're over the road and you notice it's an issue, let us know so that we can get that issue fixed. Um, it's two to three times as much. It, a lot it, of it is. It right? is. But, you know, for, for that piece, if it's a problem and it needs to be addressed and it's a safety issue, we need to take care of it. Um, secondly, traders. Same thing applies for the trader piece of it. But we could really use help from all of our drivers, associates, to make sure that when you get a trader and you check it out and you... Uh, inspect that trader if there's something wrong with it get it reported so we can get it fixed don't drop it and leave it for the next guy uh, and when you look at some of the feedback that we get that happens a lot that's a frustration uh, it, it's a huge frustration mm -hmm. so we have a, a, a lot of options available so number one you can contact the on-road group if you're hooked to the trader and it's under dispatch or you can do a macro 38 a macro 38 reports it at the tra at the customer site or the location it lets our on-road group know that, hey, this trader's at this customer and it needs fixed. And they're going to get that and they're going to set up service to get that fixed so that the next driver that goes to get it, um, it's ready to go. There's no issues. Uh, but reporting it is the number one thing. And secondly, is making sure you're doing the a good uh, pre-trip or post-trip inspection on the equipment. So, Tim, come back to the truck real quick and talk about steer tires. Yeah. Because so, that's been an issue. Everybody. And so I'll, what I've got here is a list. I apologize. You guys can't see it. But. When you start looking at, you know, our number one item that we see or our most expenses tires. And so number one, you know, if we're doing a pre-trip every day, we should never have to replace a set of tires because of low tread depth over the road. It just shouldn't happen. Now, we realize that like you could run over a nail or a piece of wood or something in the road that could damage a tire. And that makes sense. That's going to happen. But having to replace tires over the road because of low tread depth should not happen. Uh, and we've replaced far too many sets of steers over the road because of low tread depth when we should be bringing that work to our in-house facilities to get that done. So once again, it revolves around doing a good pre-trip inspection on the equipment. Um, the second item that we have on there is cranking systems. Um, and so I always try and, and, and educate everybody on cranking systems. So our trucks have, most of our trucks have four batteries in them. We have an idle system that's on the truck that uh, is designed to for both comfort mode and battery mode. But you have to look at it this way, is we realize that, you know, our drivers spend a lot of time in the cab of the truck. And a lot of that time may be sitting waiting for a load or doing a 34-hour reset, whatever it may be. But it's how you manage the load on those batteries is what makes the difference in how long they last. 
So I always try and tell everybody, act like you're out camping and you don't have a generator and you're going to be there for three days and those batteries have to last you. Now, that means you've got to control what you're drawing from those batteries. So if you're in there and you're reading a book, have just one light on. Don't have all the lights on. If you want to watch TV for a couple hours or play video games, do that. But don't sit there and do it all day long and then not have the truck set to start and recharge the batteries. And if you're going to if you're going to use like uh, appliances or microwave stuff like that, you need to start the truck. Start the truck. Have the truck. If you want to warm up dinner or, you know, start mm -hmm. the truck, use the microwave and then shut the truck off. Um, I recommend that if you're going to be sitting somewhere and the weather's nice or you're using your bunk heater and you don't need the AC, um, put the truck in battery mode. When the truck is in battery mode, it'll do a couple of things. One is it senses battery voltage. It will start and stop the truck and charge the batteries as needed. The other thing it does in battery mode is if you're in cold weather, is it has a sensor that senses the block temperature. So it'll start the truck, warm up the engine, and then shut it back off. So you no longer have to worry about idling the truck if it's below 15 degrees. The truck will start and stop itself automatically just with it being in battery mode. And how to do that is in those flow codes. In the and flow codes, you pick the particular truck, Freightliner, Volvo, right. whatever it is, right? Kenworth, right. International, so, and it'll tell you how to do that. So really just be mindful of the load that you have on there and try and only use one or two things at a time. If you're going to be using something that draws a lot of power, for example, a uh, microwave or um, some of these uh, gaming systems that we have draw a ton of power as well. The truck really should be running when you're using those. Uh, and, uh, and this brings up a question. I'm going to jump into one question real quick. Mm -hmm. They're asking, uh, so our drivers ask, what is the temperature setting? So when will it idle? Is it, you know. So right now we have the temperature set for, so on the warm end, okay. 68 degrees. So if and is that inside or outside the truck? It's, it's the outside temperature. Okay. So it's, if, if, okay. it's, if it's 68 degrees or cooler, uh, the truck is not going to, going to run. If it's 69 or warmer, the truck will start and it will run in comfort mode. In the winter months, it's 50 degrees or colder. Now, we used to have that set at 40 degrees, uh, but we had some trucks throughout this. Uh, everything that was going on with shortages with getting bunk heaters that we didn't have bunk heaters in. So we're down to only like 200 of those trucks left. Uh, we should have those cleaned up in the next 60 days probably. So we may end up switching it back to 40. Right now it's set at 50 on the low end and 68 on the high. So 50 to 68, no idle. Correct. Outside those parameters will idle and use your best judgment. Correct. And, and one of the bigger things I'm cranking to real quick is the fact that we, about 40% of our call outs is from drivers got their trucks at home right so the right. same practices that tim just described you need to use at home too right so, so this so the truck continues to do what it's supposed to do when you're not in the cab therefore when you do get ready to leave you don't have to wait for somebody to come and do a jump start on your truck right. and, and that's where we have you know times where we have jump start after jump start it's because of that so that's what yeah, we're spending a little bit of time so on. So if, if you look at the truck today that we have, and we've got a refrigerator in the truck, right? That's strong power. We've got a power inverter in there. If you use something off that, that draws power. Um, then you've got your outlets, your phones, all those different things that you may be charging, they all draw power. That's a tag. So, but to Steve's point, if you're on home time uh, and you know you're going to be there for, uh, you know, more than two days, clean the fridge out. That way you don't have to worry about idling the truck at all. Uh, if you're only going to be there for a day or two, put the truck in battery mode. That way it'll start and stop. It'll do what it needs to do. Um, it'll keep idle way, way low, but it'll eliminate that phone call to get that jump start. Or it'll eliminate the, the fact of the, you know, if the truck gets, if it's cold, of not, you know, fuel gelling up. It'll take care of all those things. And if you can't figure it out to watch the video on our flow codes, that's a direct link to YouTube, you can always go through the quick lane and they'll show you. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. But the flow codes walk you through it step by step. I mean, they're, they're very, very uh, easy yeah. to use, good videos, very self-explanatory. Perfect. So. One, of, one of the other things that came up was mattresses that we, we really tout that we have, hey, we figured out that from our driver's feedback that uh, we didn't have a great mattress. We went to an eight inch memory foam mattress. Where can I get them? So all of our shops should have them. I, I get a report once a week and I go through what we have on order versus what we have in stock. And if we have facilities that don't have them, 
I address it immediately on the day I get that report. I think it's out on Mondays. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's not been a report. I think this week we had like 1,500 in stock and another 500 on order. So mm -hmm. you can get them at your your terminals. And it can happen, right? Room. We could absolutely we can run out at one place, but if so, drive to the next terminal, which they're all mm -hmm. over the United States. Get your right. mattress. Some of the other things I think we've seen is maybe a one comes in and it's it's a different mattress that came in maybe when it was brand new. We just got to replace it out if it's four inches or something. Mistakes right. make it. Right. May happen at times. Yeah, we do. A, <clears throat> a we, we try to make sure that every truck, that whether it's a new truck or a truck that's went through the uh, new driver prep process, already has a mattress in it. So if you get your, your truck and there's a mattress in there in a plastic bag, that is a brand new mattress that's ready to go. There's no need to swap it out or try and get a new one. Those we, we, We've made that part of our process so that when you get the truck, all you have to do is take your gear, transfer over, and you should be ready to go. So another item that came up on our surveys, and this was a couple of years ago and we addressed it then, but there might be a few stragglers with dump valves. Um, now our trucks are coming with dump valves, so, right? Correct. So every truck since 20 has been ordered with dump valves in them. We did have a select few of the, the 20s and the older ones. Now, as far as the older trucks go, your 18s, most of your 18s are they're all gone. going to be they're gone. They're be gone or, or will be gone. And then we're working on the 19s. The 19s are going out of the system. But if you have a, a Freightliner inter, or I'm sorry, Freightliner Kenworth or Volvo uh, that does not have a dump valve system on it, and you want one, we'll we'll do that install. The only install we're not doing is on the internationals. And the reason for that is just the sheer there's there's a lot of work to do the dump valve update. For an international to work and the best time to do that is not to go through the quick lane but do it at your beach you service. do it at your beach service that's okay. correct right but all of our by the you know by the end of this year we won't have any trucks out there in the fleet that don't have dump valves on perfect just a couple more and then we're going to answer questions and hopefully we're hitting most of the topics man there's a lot of trailers lately right we went from <laughs> no trailers to we got a lot of trailers and some trailer condition that that came up in the survey so so there's there's a couple things going on in the trailer world we're we're doing our best at the at our facilities to make sure that we're doing yard checks on our equipment, right? Mm -hmm. And making sure that we understand where the loaded trailers are, um, where the empty trailers are, and, and so on and so forth as we move forward. You're gonna see a lot of trailer, um, a lot of facilities with trailers that are, are backed up where we've got 15, 20 in the backside just to kind of bundle them up because we wanna make sure we have room for the drivers coming in at night, right? Because they come mm -hmm. in at night, they wanna park, they need a hole, so we need to make sure we gather that piece up. Now, one big change that's happening that uh, over the last couple of years we haven't done is we haven't sold trailers, but we are now going to do that moving forward. We're in the process of identifying, um, you know, at the, at the high mark will probably be about 2,000 trailers that will get identified and get them through the process of disposition, and then we will get them off our yards as quickly as we can. This is not a fast project. It it takes time. You got to identify them, put them through uh, the paperwork process, and then get them de-identified and get them ready for sale. We'll do that as quick as we can to get them off um, our yards. So be patient with us. We'll, we'll, we'll move forward on that. Uh, but the other thing is, is, is we do have a program where we call trailer trailer coating on the equipment, where they we do different colored ribbons, green ribbon shows that the trailer is empty and ready for service. The blue ribbon is trailer is loaded. The red tag is the trailer. The red one is for a trailer is not safe for service. Yellow is trailer is going to be sold and cannot be dispatched. So we will. We are working hard to make sure we follow these rules. I'm not going to say that we're 100 percent at this point. Go ahead. 100 percent at this point completed um, throughout our all of our locations, but we are working on it make sure we can get these these trailers tagged so we get it there's 46,000 trailers out there and it looks like all 46,000 are in our in our yards nice. and and we'll do our best and then on top of that you know when we talk about selling trailers we're trying to get the oldest ones out first right because we know that there there's some pain points there uh, so we'll work our way from the 2005 and older and then we'll come 2006 7 8 we'll work our way right on up until we get to that watermark of 2,000 trailers. And, and then we'll see reset and see what we'll do after that. 
and we're trying to organize our yards and we're doing some different things with the yard checks and there's things coming in the near future by the summer uh, where you will scan a trailer and see availability right. there's all kinds of exciting stuff but you'll start to see pictures like this that will lay out that process and i know it's hard to see from afar but needless to say it'll show the ribbons as you go in the, the shop area we'll have people doing yard checks that process is going to improve along with the scanning of the qr codes you see freight box mm -hmm. Uh, emblems decals. all over our, our decals all over our trailers. So there's a lot coming. It's just tech that's almost finished. We're like 90% there, I feel like. We are. So and probably, I'm going to say we'll probably be 100% come September. Mm -hmm. And that gets us, you know, we're at right about 16,000 trailers complete on the freight box QR code today. And our goal is to get all 70,000 trailers done um, here by September. Perfect. So we're going to hit a, about 10 questions here. We're almost right at 30 minutes, but I'll try to blaze through some of these and, and some quick short answers. Uh, blue fifth wheel grease versus red fifth wheel grease. So we won't, the reason why we don't have the blue fifth wheel grease is because of the additive packages it takes to manufacture the blue type uh, grease. So we'll be staying with red moving forward until we think we can figure out the additive packages from Chevron. Okay. Why do we service other carriers with iron maintenance and swift drivers have to wait for service? Well, that's, that's kind of a new one on yeah, me. But, um, that's not really the case. Iron maintenance the case, no. really has some of our shop, right? They, they're they, a separate they, they, entity. Correct. And they are running the, a business that they're servicing other carriers, but you right. still have your shop employees. We, we do, but, under, but with the understanding of this um, is that iron maintenance is in our shops. They do have their own bays, but there's days where, their folks are out on PTO or they're sick. Therefore, the the service technician from uh, Swift or Knight's got to go and, and make those repairs. We don't want their customers sitting around either or, or missing out on that uh, on the, the labor that it takes to get that done. So we use our own labor. That's why you'll see sometimes an iron truck maybe in a service shop of Swift or Knight. Well, and on that note, though, it should be a normal thing. But it's also no. important to note that when the iron folks don't have uh, are slow on work then they work on our equipment as well correct it goes vice versa right excellent here's one about when will the monitors be up in greer there's a plan i, I don't we don't have it right in front of us but so greer has the, the equipment coming okay uh, i think the last thing that they were waiting on was either a, a monitor or the ability to so the screen doesn't lock so i would imagine that would be up in the next couple of weeks awesome so you did have it great mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Um, what is the issue with the 2024 with check engine light? Um, with Freightliner, sorry. With Freightliner, um, I'd have to have a little bit more information uh, on on the particular issue. I don't know of any necessarily issue of you know all the 2024 Freightliners having uh, check engine lights. There was a question that came in via an email to me about two hours ago that said. We had a driver that's in a new Freightliner that has a light they've never seen on the dash before. And so I've asked them for some information on that. Uh, but as far as check engine lights, uh, there's nothing that's that's standing out that, right now. Okay. Uh, but if something does come up, the best thing I can tell you to do is, one, is just go to one of our shops through the quick lane, and we'll be able to look at that and figure out whatever that issue may be. Perfect. Uh, we have one person that put some of the notifications from the Engage app aren't real time, resulting in unnecessary wait times. Definitely like to see this improvement in this area. It should be working correctly. So we need you to get with your terminal leader or somebody to give us an example so we can yeah, figure I out mean, where the delay is, right? So obviously, if it's a long delay, I mean, usually what ends up happening is, is it, that system updates its set to update every five minutes. So it's sending that okay. information every five minutes. So if if you're not if you're seeing like an hour or two hour delay, then yeah, there's there's got to be something else that's that's going on there. But uh, you know, a five to ten minute delay in information that's that's probably normal. And, I would think. And most of the time, they're probably going to be at the shop already. So mm -hmm. just walk back to the shop and talk to them and right. and get your update and figure out why it's not working. Yep. Here's a great one, and this goes with our project team. So he, this driver is asking: Has a driver level maintenance, um, like for instance, training videos on on wipers, uh, bulbs, et cetera, have been considered. So that's exactly what we're looking to do, right? And looking give those... to do, but we also already have some of those videos that are that are Perfect. done. So those will be the types of videos that you're going to see on the Engage app. 
So this Thursday, or not the engage up. I'm sorry, the, the flow, uh, codes. flow codes. So this Thursday, that's probably the next ones we need to Correct. extract from Swift University or wherever they are mm -hmm. and get them in there. Okay. Um, can Macro 38 be set up to let us know it has been received or processed? Either so one. It, it does that today. It will as soon as that message comes in and it's been received, it'll send a message right back letting them know that that message has been received. And okay. to add to that, we now have a message that goes out after the equipment has been repaired. Correct. It goes to the driver. Goes to the to it? No, it goes to the driver that reported it. Correct. Okay. So if you reported it two days ago and it's fixed today, you'll get that message. So if you're not seeing that, give us uh, get with your terminal leader. They can call Tim or Steve mm -hmm. and give us that exact workflow or give us that so trailer understand. and we can Correct. look at it and track it down if it's not happening but it should be mm -hmm. um can you start your truck while running or using a microwave uh so number one start the truck before you use the microwave okay okay so i i don't recommend starting it while you're actually using the microwave perfect here's one that says why not supply trucks with portable jump boxes they're easy to use it's really a cost okay. and well yeah. so we don't want you you shouldn't have yeah, to jump it the, the cost associated with that obviously is extremely high but mm -hmm. that's why we spec the truck with the idle systems that we have if you simply put it in battery mode you don't have to worry about that if you go through the shop and there's problems with your batteries we'll check them we'll, we'll check replace them. them that's correct i've seen pallets of them sitting in yeah. the shops yeah. right right uh repaired fuel islands coming soon for some terminals that's so we have so right now memphis is underway uh, Greer will be breaking ground very soon, along with uh, Phoenix and Atlanta, and that's all I got off of memory. But we we've got s six that are in the works right now. And they, I think they said for the year in a previous video was fifteen to twenty. Or well, 15. our goal is by the next two years is to refresh all the fuel. Elements. And that's pump reader. So when, when we say right? refresh, we're we're going through and doing a complete remodel. So. It'll be all new pumps. Uh, the good news about the pumps is, is that you'll no longer have to walk to the little uh, card reader in between three or four bays. Uh, the card readers will be built into the pump. The pump will have diesel fuel and def right there together. Uh, so we're doing all new new fuel pumps. Now, I will tell you that uh, based off of the volume that we're pumping, so for example, Memphis or Phoenix here, Phoenix is an eight lane fuel island. We only use about six of those lanes so we're only updating six of the lanes. The other two lanes will we'll just leave. Memphis is getting, I believe, three lanes done. Um, and then Greer's only got two. So Greer's going to get both of their lanes. Redone. And I think those extra couple lanes, what we've talked about doing was putting vacuums. So we're going to right? have we're going to have vacuums out there. Uh, we even talked about certain locations like Lancaster. We may put the driver transfer station there with a the vacuum. So if they want to clean their truck and transfer their gear out, they can in those lanes. Awesome. Uh, so there'll be uh, there'll be more to come. So as we get the uh, first two done, obviously we'll post pictures and things of that nature on it. But Perfect. Um, it's it, it's a big project. It takes the, the reason it takes some time is you got to get permits, and so getting the permits and getting the equipment in and all those things take time. So there should be four or five here in the near future, so people can at least see what's coming. Oh, kind absolutely. Like when we start remodeling the terminals, then you kind of yeah. know what to expect. Memphis right? will Memphis be the will be very first. first one done, and then right behind that will be uh, will be Greer. Uh, Phoenix and Atlanta. So big ones. Mm -hmm. um, when are the shops uh, going to start giving the owner offers estimated costs for work uh, like we've been told they will, will be doing? That should be happening now. Should be happening. So anytime you go to the shop and they, you know, you go in, they can look at that, they can get you the estimate. Now, obviously, there may be times where depending on, you know, if the problem's unknown, they may need to tell you that we need a little bit of diag time to figure out what the problem is. Uh, but we do estimates on, uh, every day for owner operators on a regular basis. Now we don't necessarily do an estimate for, you know, if they're just coming in to get a PM, but anytime they're, they're coming in, they want an estimate done. We should be giving you that estimate. Yeah. They just got to ask for it. Yep, just ask if, for if we're it. not getting it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Here's a couple mm -hmm. questions um, about uh, our wash bays. I know all of them, but two are on the schedule. I just got an email today and I can't remember what the second one was. Edwardsville is one that it'll be next year because I think there's some permits and other things they have to do. But all of the, I was told today that all of the other bays, except for one, uh, will be remodeled this year. So that's motors, pressure, everything. 
Yeah, and in uh, facilities as they go out, and we've been meeting to go through and do the fuel island piece. I know they've been looking at the automated wash or the wash bay facilities as well. Uh, but your information is more accurate than mine. I, I don't have an update on. Then you can get the facilities going. information right. from from Glenn. As I say, I can tell you within a sort here, I believe. Um, truck wash locations. Um, looks like Decatur and Edwardsville will be next next uh, year, but all the other ones, the um, Lancaster, Lathrop, Memphis, uh, Phoenix, West Valley, Jonestown will all be this year. This year, good. Okay. That was, it actually just came in today. So um, let's see here. Uh, Said it. I think I'm, I mean, there's some not in your company, Jeremy. Okay. So I think we've hit a lot of these. Um, we are about 40 minutes. So um, just for the sake of time, uh, I think we can wrap up. If we didn't answer your question, we'll answer the question um, in the chat or we'll respond to you. So thanks for all the engagement. Um, appreciate this. We're going to continue to do more of these with whether it's be owners, payroll, shop. Hey, the shop is more than willing to come back if you give us a bunch of topics. You can drop topics in the chat if we miss some stuff that you'd like us to come back in a month. And I've been teasing Tim that I want to do tools with Tim or something. <laughs> he hasn't quite, you know, fell for my shenanigans yet, but we'll have some cool, cool little uh, series come up soon. I'm sure we'll talk him into it, but I want to say thank you guys for joining us today. Appreciate you know, it's a yeah. lot of great information. I know our drivers appreciate it, and they appreciate all you guys' hard work. We appreciate them. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate thank it. You guys. Be safe.